today we're going to be talking about anomaly detection, just one of the exciting features available in the VMware Aria Cost, powered by Cloud Health, formerly Cloud Health Platform. To put it simply, an anomaly is unusual or unexpected cloud expense based on the trailing 13 months of historical spend to ensure that seasonality and spending trends are accommodated while calculating these anomalies. Anomaly detection intends to catch the suspicious behavior as soon as it occurs with the help of AI and machine learning to help avoid some of these costly cloud surprises. In our platform, anomaly detection is located under setup, then under governance, and finally, anomaly detection. With the help of AI and machine learning, anomaly detection enables users to monitor unusual or abnormal spend in order to help understand and analyze spend patterns and then take swift action on the unwanted spend. The need for anomaly detection originated with the intent to give better control to cloud owners over sudden changes in their environments resulting in unwanted or unexpected spend. Today, anomaly detection is available for the three major clouds, AWS, Azure, and GCP. When arriving on the first page of anomaly detection, we share a list of all active and inactive anomalies over the last seven days by using the default settings. Active anomalies are when the system detects the anomaly and it is ongoing. Inactive anomalies are when the anomaly is no longer active and the system has moved it to, the event, to an event in the past. The third unlisted anomaly type is archived anomalies. An archived anomaly is when the anomaly detected is no longer actionable due to a bill change by the cloud provider. In the three boxes along the top, we have included some quick at a glance information, such as number of anomalies, total cost impact of the anomalies, and lastly, total cost. Total cost is the total account spend for those accounts that have been impacted by anomalous spend. Now, the data we see in the table below is based on our default settings. If we navigate up to all filters, we can begin to drill down to some of the other metrics that will allow you to make the data more meaningful and actionable. Maybe we want to see a longer time frame, which in this case we offer up to 90 days worth of data. Or maybe we'd like to drill into a specific service, account, or region. Or maybe you want anomalies above a specific dollar amount or specific percent percentage of impact. In addition, by default, the system only displays cost increases. If we would want if we want to see the instances where there was a cost decrease, we'd navigate to cost impact type and then turn on all. Once we've made the filter changes, we want to best understand our infrastructure, we can click apply. Now that we have our settings the way we want, we see some changes to our table and our three anomaly boxes along the top of the screen, like the addition of decreases. In the chart below, our list of anomalies is sorted by default by the start date of the anomaly with the most recent and active anomalies at the top for quick reference. Looking left to right, our columns also include duration of the anomaly, account ID and account name, the service type and region where the anomaly occurred, and if it was a marketplace purchase. After we detail out some of the account information, we start to dive into the information around the impact itself, like impact cost impact type, increase or decrease, cost impact, which is the total increase or decrease of the anomaly, cost impact percentage, which is the percentage of, the, of cost the anomaly was versus the total cost, total cost for the instance, including the anomaly cost impact, 
anomaly status if it is inactive or active, and lastly, if feedback has been submitted. With the two most important columns being cost impact and cost impact percentage. Based on 13 months of historical spend, cost impact and cost impact percentage detail out the deviation from the normal spending patterns and the impact that the specific anomaly has made versus the normal historical base spend. Before diving into a specific anomaly, I want to highlight a key feature of anomaly detection. The ability to alert key stakeholders when an anomaly occurs. This can be done by clicking New Policy in the top right hand corner. When building a policy to alert key stakeholders of anomalous spend, the first thing we are going to do is give the policy a unique name. In this case, I'm going to focus on alerting on AWS based anomalies. The second thing we are going to do is choose the resource type in this case. AWS anomaly. I want to know twice a day when anomalous spend occurs in my cloud environment. So I'm going to switch to hourly and I'm going to switch to have this evaluated every 12 hours, triggering the alerts. Save my evaluation. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to start configuring our conditions. First thing we're going to choose cost for a topic, cost impact as the measure, and now we're going to build out our condition. When the cost impact of, I'm going to choose any, active or inactive, is increasing, decreasing, or increasing and decreasing, I'm going to choose increasing and decreasing, is greater than, choose percentage, and I'm going to say 75%. Update in the last, I'm going to say day, for all available accounts. I'm going to save my condition. Now I'm going to choose the action that accompanies this condition. When this condition is met, I want to be alerted via email. And I can also add any other key stakeholders to be alerted via email as well to save my action. Once I have added all the conditions, all the personnel that I want to be alerted, I'm going to save the policy. I will begin to receive alerts once an anomaly has been detected via this policy. One more way that we provide flexibility to cloud owners is the ability for users to export these anomalies into a CSV file for data sharing and further analysis. To get more rich data, visibility, and granularity that the platform provides, we give the ability to dive into specific anomalies. To get more information on a single anomaly, we dive in by clicking the date that is highlighted in blue. Once we've clicked into anomaly, we start to get substantially more data about the impact itself. The first thing that jumps off the page there's a graph in the middle of the screen where we can visually display the cost over the last seven days by default with the anomaly marked with an A in a blue box. For this example, because we changed our previous screen to include the last 14 days of anomalies, that is carried over until our, into our chart. When we move to the top of the page, we're given most of the data that we saw on the first page, however, this is in a chart format. If the status is listed active, like we have here, we do not have an end date or a duration as the anomaly is still ongoing. If we were to have a status of inactive, we would have an end date and a total number of days in our duration category. As I previously mentioned, by default in our graph, we give you the cost of this service over the past seven days, but you can change that period to include up to the last 90 days. For our example, I'm going to include the last 90 days, and I'm also going to show other anomalies. 
This tag will then add past anomalies that have happened on this service. These past and inactive anomalies will show as an A in a gray box. Now for our example, we see that this service has had a couple of anomalies in the past. By scrolling down below our graph, we see two additional charts. The chart on the left details the total daily costs of this service for the time period that we've selected, which in this case is 90 days. The larger chart on the right shares the information around all the anomalies, past and present, active and inactive, with the same cost data we see on the top of the page for the active anomaly, but for all anomalies that have occurred on this service. Now, before jumping in and taking a look at the root cause, I want to highlight another key feature of anomaly detection, the ability to submit feedback. By submitting feedback, you are helping our AI and machine learning engine know if this was, yes, an unexpected anomaly, if it was an expected anomaly, or not an anomaly at all and a false positive. By selecting not an anomaly, you'll be moving this anomaly to an archived anomaly state. In addition to being able to help track your anomalies inside your organization, by submitting feedback, you're also con contributing to the improvement of our algorithms. Submitting feedback can also be done on the main page by checking the anomaly and then clicking Submit Feedback. Now, we want to provide you a deeper analysis, and we do that by providing a root cause. By navigating up to View Root Cause, we take you to an in-depth flex report showing detailed information around the resources impacted. By putting this anomaly and its data into a flex report, we give the ability to share, copy, and ultimately save the report to stay on top of the anomaly going forward. Our flex report on the anomaly will provide deep insights into the specific resources impacted by providing resource IDs, cost, usage amount, and usage type. When we sort by unblended cost or usage amount, we start to see some of the most expensive and used resources contributing to this anomaly. In addition, while we have shown that some of the dashboards allow up to 90 days worth of data on anomalies, by leveraging our Flex Reports engine, we can understand historical anomalies that are outside of that current 90-day window. We do this by navigating to Filters and then Day in the new side menu. This additional level of detail and flexibility gives you as a customer a detailed view into the anomalous spend and the resources you need to take action in order to maintain your cloud infrastructure. Thank you for your time to learn about how VMware Aria Cost, powered by Cloud Health, is here to give you more information and better control of your cloud environments using anomaly detection. Thank you for watching. For more information, detailed videos, and blogs about all Aria Suite products, please visit apps-cloudmanagement.techzone.vmware.com or simply scan the QR code to learn more.